So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology, iPad mini 5 one year later. Now this launched in 2019, however it's still very relevant right now in terms of the specs you do get. It's going right now for $349 on Amazon, it's actually on sale, I'll leave a link to the Amazon version down below. Now quick refresher if you're unaware of the specs of the iPad mini, this iPad mini does have the same 7.9 inch retina display that came with the prior iPad minis, but because it's cramming so much pixels like something like 2048 by 1536 on this display we are getting you know one of the sharpest if not the sharpest resolution on an ipad also we do have an 8 megapixel camera on the rear that's capable up to 1080p and then we do have three gigabytes of ram with this tablet and does have an a12 bionic chip now the a12 bionic chip is definitely going to make this thing fly in performance and give you some crazy geekbench numbers for a tablet and also it's the same chip found in the iphone 10s 10s max as well as the 10r which is still a very fast chip and the smallest battery of the iPad land pretty much a 5,124 but I'll talk more about how the battery life is actually quite good still even though it's a 5,124 okay guys so I want to begin by talking about the body of this tablet super small first of all I feel like it doesn't look super small in this angle but let me put the iPad Pro 11 here to show you how small this tablet really is and the iPad Pro 11 is no massive tablet it's a pretty decent size it's pretty big but it's not no 12.9 and you could see you can fit almost two iPad minis in the size of the iPad Pro 11. Now this is the space gray variant you could get this tablet in silver you can also get this tablet in white with the gold on the back as well or you can just get this space gray. I think the space gray looks pretty professional here. Now, this also has stylus support. I'm not gonna cover the Apple Pencil. I did that in my full review of this tablet I did a year back. Go ahead and check that out. But this tablet weighs in at just 300.5 grams. I mean, this is not even a pound of weight here. So an incredibly light device with iPad functionality, iPad OS functionality is what really made the iPad mini compelling is that you have the ability now to do all this, you know, split screen stuff that you have for a while, but the ability to have multiple apps side by side and even put a third app right here is just pretty fun to do and the ability to put a third application here just having all this functionality on this small screen it's just pretty fun to do this and just having this power makes it beastly in my opinion because you can get most of the tasks you would probably do done on a laptop on here and get a little keyboard case for the iPad mini and it's game over you have basically all the functionality you need besides certain laptop tasks you might need your laptop for now the weakness of this size though the ipad mini is that when it when you are typing a lot or you're doing a lot of intensive long term like you're going to be doing work for a couple hours on here it can feel a little bit cramped, but you gotta know that that's the trade-off you're willing to make to get the iPad mini. But it's nice that you can easily thumb type like side to side here because it's so small that you can easily type almost like a phone on here. So iPad mini 5 is a nice tablet option for people who want, who want a smaller iPad Pro alternative because you can get the Apple Pencil and you have a faster chip than their base 10.2 iPad as well. Now discussing Touch ID, it's definitely a blessing right here to have Touch ID right now, especially if you're using this outdoors. Um, Face ID is not working very well with the current, you know, mask restrictions that people are wearing masks a lot. So this is a really great time to have Touch ID, but if you're just leaving this in the house, you probably aren't wearing a mask in the house anyway. So definitely Touch ID is still very useful and very fast here for the iPad mini. I have no issue with it, but I don't like how in order to get Touch ID, we have these thicker bezels here. I've seen a couple concept drawings where we're seeing iPad Pro like reduction in bezels on an even smaller iPad mini. Maybe that's the dream iPad mini. We'll see what happens going forward. And maybe that's why we're seeing price reductions because maybe we're gonna see a new iPad mini redesign soon, hopefully. And now discussing display quality. This is basically reminding me of like the iPhone SE 2020 where Apple decided to keep the older display. This is the retina display, but it still gets plenty bright. It still has true tone. It still has dark mode, nice range of dim as well. And you do have, you know, the ability to put on night shift wherever you would like it. Very enjoyable high end display here, even though it's only at seven point nine inches now this is not oled so if you want a samsung oled type of display you're probably not going to like this one quite as much 
but I mean, it has really, it has no screen bleed. That's one thing I noticed about most Apple products. Quality control is A1. You have no screen bleeding, nothing like that around the corners, even though this is an LCD. This is a laminated display. So the display is actually closer to the surface, giving you a sharper look and feel on a day-to-day. -day. Just an excellent overall 7.9 inch LCD panel. Now one area where this display suffers a bit though is the aspect ratio. Now black bars are on here, so top and bottom. And the reason why I say it suffers a bit is because, you know, that's acceptable on a bigger display because there's more display, but it starts to feel like the video is not much bigger than like a seven inch smartphone or like a 6.9 inch smartphone when in YouTube. So videos are quite small on here. However, you can still enjoy them. It's not gonna be a big issue. Because of that aspect ratio, it's better for productivity like split screen apps, you know, doing schoolwork and stuff like that, having, you know, side notes over here and doing some browsing over here. It helps out in that fashion, but in Netflix, YouTube, stuff like this, sometimes it's not gonna take up the whole display. Now discussing the OS on here, I do have iPad OS 13 on here. This is capable of running iOS 14, but we're not gonna update this one until it officially launches and then we'll have widget support and stuff like that also scribbling with the pen options as well but really i just like how you know the ipad os really has come to the point where you know it's a really great macbook replacement if you don't need all those macbook programs and the more capability that's coming with the 14 it's just incredible that you can do all this on a 7.9 inch display that can easily fit in some people's back pockets to be quite honest and even smaller bags so yeah i love iPad mini for all its productivity in such a small fact. And discussing the performance on here, this chip is so well optimized by Apple with the software that you can easily do video editing on here and things of that nature as long as you get a little keyboard to help you out. And this also has mouse support now with 13. So definitely the ability to do all of this on such a small tablet is just so fun. It's just fun to use all these features on a smaller, body so performance no issues one area where i will say that it's a little bit slower than something like the ipad pro is when doing split screen sometimes not all the time it will take a second for it to kind of load that split screen the three gigs of ram also doesn't hold too many applications in the background so sometimes you might get something to reload but general overall performance of this tablet has been excellent and definitely recommended here one year later. Now, one thing I don't like about the iPad mini is that when you start upping the storage, it gets really pricey compared to the 64 gig. So if you do wanna go from the 64 gig iPad mini to the 256 GB, it goes up significantly in the price. So you're at 349, at 256 gig for 499, it's still kind of a deal, you know, I mean, especially considering that's a lot of storage, but at the same time, I still think the better value option is the 64 gig. So if you can live with the 64 gig, you're gonna get more value for the money. 500, we're, look we're looking at Windows laptops at 500 that are pretty decent. We're looking at, you know, better iPads than this. We're looking at a used iPad Pro in this area. So definitely, I think the iPad mini at, you know, 349, 400 is the, the best price for this tablet. And so let's discuss the camera a bit on this tablet. Definitely surprisingly good for an eight megapixel camera on a tablet. I mean, you won't need much more than this for the iPad mini, but you're not able to get really good zoom quality. It gets very grainy at the zoom because there's no telephoto on here. So you can just see the level of green on this camera. This is no professional iPad camera right here. So this is not one you're gonna wanna set up on a tripod you know, take a lot of video and then post it on YouTube. This is not gonna be the best option for that, but it can take some pretty good video. Definitely in a pinch, it's worth using. Seeing over here on the front facing camera, not too great either, but again, worth using in a pinch. And just the fact that it has decent enough cameras for usability is fine by me. You can always just use your phone if you need better quality cameras. And one year later with the audio, Surprisingly, even though this is not, you know, speakers coming out of all sides right here, come out the bottom. They still sound quite loud for this tablet. I'd still love to see, you know, stereo speakers here, 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 and here, all four corners. That would be like an iPad mini pro. That would be sweet coming out of this would be very loud. Um, really would like to see that on the next iPad mini. And something else you might like about the audio on this tablet is it does have a headphone jack still, something you don't find 
on the iPad Pros. Now when it comes to the battery life, there's no low power mode on here, but you don't really need it. Now the iPad mini gives me around seven to nine hours consistently of straight battery life for you, straight using it all day. You can even get around 10 hours, which Apple rates it if you do lower that brightness down and you're not pushing it too hard, you can get somewhere around there. It doesn't match something like an iPad Pro 11 or even the 10.2 inch iPad, but still it's incredible battery life for what you get. I mean, no, most Windows laptops couldn't even come close to this little powerhouse iPad mini. I especially find it better when you're just watching videos or something like that, it lasts kind of forever. Browsing with Safari specifically, battery lasts pretty good. But when you start doing split screen, running multiple apps at a time, it does drain a little bit. And one of the biggest culprits will be gaming. By the way, this tablet can run most games pretty excellent. Again, no 120 hertz ProMotion display on here, which what I'd like to see on the next iPad mini. But still, it can run every game on the app store. So you're gonna have no issues gaming. And because those bezels, you can kind of hold on when playing car racing games and stuff like that. And so that's it. I don't have much more to say about the iPad mini. I really got excited when I seen the price drop $50 on this one. I think it makes it an excellent deal at $349. We're talking around the price of an iPhone SE 2020. You can get yourself an iPad. And if you do like the smaller form factor of the iPad mini, there's really no competition to this tablet on the market today. It definitely, there's, there's really just isn't. So iPad mini one year later is a fantastic option still. However, there is a potential of a new iPad mini coming in the future, but we never know with what's going on when that's gonna happen. So if you want a small tablet beast right now, I recommend picking it up. Link down below in the description. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you have an iPad mini, please share your experience with the community, what you've learned about it, how much you've loved it, how much you've disliked it, if you traded it, if you just got a bigger iPad. I'll catch you all on the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Be sure to be well and peace.